Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be reviewing all of the changes to the roster in the 1.5 update for Injustice 2 Mobile that we covered in the live stream. That means any brand new heroes like Sub-Zero and Aquaman and Captain Cold. And then we're going to go over any buffs or nerfs to the current roster, um, like the fact that Mythic Wonder Woman's um, Special 1 no longer is armor piercing, um, and the fact that Emerald Green Lantern got moved down to a two-star starting gold character. The last thing we'll be covering is the fact that Supergirl is now going to be playable in challenges, and the bug, glitch, whatever you want to call it, that she had with her finally got fixed. Additionally, this is only one of many, many parts of the update that we covered um, during the live stream. So I've made a playlist of all of the changes that came out in the 1.5 update, and they're in a playlist in the link in the description below if you guys want to check that out as well. Without further ado, let's jump right into it, guys. If you do um, get Emerald Green Lantern, it's going to come out at two stars instead of at three stars, and because of that, um, it's going to be way harder to get them to star rating five, but you are going to have a solid base gold character that can tank and do damage for you. So they've learned that everybody wants Emerald Green Lantern because he's a god, um, but it's going to be way harder for people to max him out now. So thank God that I maxed him out prior to that update because it's going to be really hard to get him to uh, star rating 10 or star rating 5. What the hell am I saying? I've been drinking. I need to actually drink some more. I owe you guys some booze. Um, Powered Supergirl is now available to get in challenge mode, which is going to be awesome. You can see that you can get her through challenges under where you can get her shards. Um, and then we've got Sub-Zero, um, who you can also get through challenges. Um, he essentially is a damage character, only damage. Um, he, uh, doesn't really, he doesn't really have any support aspects to him. So ability 3 spawns an Ice Clone um, of the current opponent with 10% health, 50% attack, no super move, no passive, but he can use the specials. I don't know why you would want to, but you can if you need to. Um, and then he freezes the opponent with Ice Ball for 2 seconds. And that's awesome because you can r do a combo, use your special Ice Ball, and then um, do more damage through combos to them, right? That's awesome, but he's essentially just a damage character. Um, let's go back through and look at Supergirl real quick. Supergirl. Um, critical hits on her most basic attacks grant Kara the chance to use her walking laser ability for no power cost. Um, okay, uh, I think that should be pretty good. 10% um, chance to adjust power cost by negative 100% on jump basic, so everything, um, attacks for ability 1. Yeah, so essentially you get 10% chance on a crit attack to get a free walking laser, which is pretty awesome. Um, especially if you boost up her crit attack chance. If you get a, like a 50% crit attack chance, then every 20 hits you do will give you a free walking laser. So that's pretty awesome. Um, who else do we have? We've got Captain Cold, and this says only in arena mode you can get him. I'm not 100% sure if that means that he's gonna be an arena, an arena season hero or whether that means he's going to be an arena, like you can buy him with arena medals. I think it's going to be arena medals because they didn't announce any new arena season heroes, but he might be a season hero. Not sure quite yet. Um, his abilities, 30% uh, team critical attack resistance. I don't, I don't really like that too much. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of 50, 50 for me. It's like, if you, if you have critical attack resistance, then that's great because he might be able to get it up to 50%, but you're still taking a massive amount of damage. That critical attack damage isn't as much as if he just boosted up your team defense by even like 15%. So uh, it, it's okay. It depends how good he is at actually doing damage and then how long that uh, special one, that frost field, actually lasts for. Uh, it doesn't say here. So let me just read his thing. Yeah, it's all about... Um, either doing damage over time, slowing power generation, or disabling um, opponents' abilities when he tags in. Um, for me, none of those passives really are as good as other heroes with awesome passives. Um, I would pick, um, what's his name? Scarecrow? Uh, like a hundred times over this guy so far. Because the power generation... On special one won't give it won't slow it by two bars so that's not 
worth it really and then the tag in to disable their um abilities one or two is nice but it's only until that person tags out right so i don't know man i don't know it's kind of 50 50 for me i need to see what kind of character is he. if he is if he's a sick awesome damage character then he will be amazing uh and he shows up right behind suicide harley quinn as starting threat um and he's tech class his stats kind of blow a little bit I don't know. We'll see how how good he, he actually can be, but uh, for me, he doesn't rank up that high uh, so far. Then we got two really confusing characters. We've got the Atlantean Aquaman. So you get him through Heroic Campaign 4, Achievements, and Hero Chests. So I'm guessing... I don't think I've got any shards for him, right? So it says you get him through Achievements. So that means that when you complete the game on Normal Mode, you will get achievements based on Atlantean Aquaman. Simple as that. As soon as you beat the campaign in normal mode, you'll start getting um, rewards for, for heroic campaigns. That's what that says right there. So as soon as I beat the game, I'm probably going to get a whole bunch more um, gems for heroic campaign gameplay. Maybe I'll try and do that today. I don't know. Um, so it says that for Atlantean Aquaman, he's going to heal your entire team over time. Also, using Neptune, um, Nep oh sorry, the power of Neptune, was, which is one of his abilities, he can drain power off it. So you can see that his um, level one, oh sorry, his level five ability, whatever you want to call that, drains 1.2 bars of power at um, level two, at star rating two. So. Maybe it'll be up to two bars of power. Maybe it'll be up to five bars of power. I don't know because we need to level him up to find out what it jumps up by each time you um, increase his star rating. But we'll find out. That damage over time will be the only thing that you can actually level up by leveling up that ability to level 60 or whatever. It's not going to level the amount of power drain bars you can do. <laughs> Alright, so um, his stats are pretty garbage too, but he's meant to be a support character, which is awesome. Um, so he should be pretty awesome as another support here. He should be good with uh, Soul Steel or Doctor Fate, even maybe. Now this Aquaman is really confusing. Uh, he looks a little bit weird too. His face, man. Like I see, I feel like I've seen him at my grocery store. You know what I mean? Um, so you get him through daily objectives only. So you can only get him by in the two week period. Or sorry, was it two weeks? Yeah, I think it was two week period or whatever it said at the beginning that he was going to be available for under the. Um, under the daily objectives. For Aquaman's entire team, might class teammates grant stun resistant bonus while metahuman class teammates improve, t uh, improve team defense. Also using the power of Neptune may drain opponent's power while dealing damage over time. So same deal with the power of Neptune where it's going to drain that, that bar of power. Except his passive is so fucking weird. He is a might class hero, and he's saying that if you have might class teammates on your team, then you get stun resistance per might class team. So you're, if you're focused on a might class team, then you get 10% bonus stun resistance. Half of his passive is for might teammates, and the other half is for metahuman. So if you stack your team with might teammates, then you're missing out on the metahuman passive, and if you're stacking them with metahuman, then you're missing out on the might. And if you've got half of each, then you're missing out on one of each of the other passives. So it's like, if it, if it just said both of those passives were for might teammates, I'd be like, that's sick! That is awesome! Yeah, so I don't know. He's he's okay, but I just wish both of his, both of his passives were for one set of characters. You know what I mean? Whether it was for um, just might or just metahuman. Either way, I don't know. I he'll, It's nice to have a passive that does something helpful for your entire team, but... I don't know. First off, he's a, a silver character, so I'm probably almost never going to use him. And then second off, um, his passives aren't great. Like, I wish that those challenge characters were like Amazon Wonder Woman. You read her passive, right? It says, um, when owned, all female heroes on your roster get 2% health. Oh, I can upgrade that. Hell yeah. 3% health. Nice. You see how helpful that is? Like, she, she's a silver character, and she doesn't even have to be part of your team, and she's helping your entire roster. That's the kind of stuff that I need to see more of in this game, I think, because I'm more likely to play every day to get 
the characters that benefit my entire team and try and level them to star rating 5. Alrighty guys, like I said at the beginning of the video, there are a ton of 1.5 changes that we have covered so far, y'all. So if you haven't seen the playlist in the link in the description below, um, that has pretty much every single change within Injustice 2 that happened in the 1.5 update in one of those videos. So go check that out if you'd like to see all of the updates, as well as if you like this video, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe. If you want to check out my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon, all of those links are in the description below. On my Twitter, I essentially ask you guys what you want to see in the upcoming videos, as well as posts where I'm going live for live streams on YouTube. On Twitch, it's essentially pretty much any other video game than Injustice 2 Mobile, so it's any console games, PC games, or any other mobile games. And then last but not least, if you want to support me monetarily, that's on Patreon. And you can get Patreon-exclusive content over there. There's giveaways, all kinds of stuff over there, guys. So go check that out if you'd like as well. If you have any questions about the video, um, let me know in the comment section below or put up, post them on Twitter. You guys know that I try and answer as many of those questions as possible. And that's all. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace, guys.